Courageous family, what's going on, guys? Listen, listen, listen. You guys just came out of a live worship experience. Our team has done a phenomenal job today of setting everything up in this place. Without Pastor Crystal and I being there, we send our greetings. We are actually on vacation this weekend, but we wanted to make sure that we recorded something very special for you guys on this particular Sunday. This is 4th of July and we celebrate the freedom and the liberties that we find in this country. And we are so grateful and thankful for that freedom and liberty, but more than anything, we are grateful and free and, and uh, we're thankful and grateful, amen, for the freedoms and liberty that we have in Christ. And I'm so grateful for every single person that is here today on the 4th of July. Now, I'm going to get you guys out of here. We promised you guys we we're going to get on one hour service today. So I'm going to do my best job to keep myself on course and to keep myself focused in the way that I need to. Oh, by the way, my wife and I are celebrating our 19th year anniversary. That's why we're not there as well. So while you guys are celebrating 4th of July, we got fireworks going as well. Hello, somebody. Happy anniversary to you, boo. I'm so excited. We are away and that's why we're not here today. But listen, God's got a word for you. God had me record this right before I left, so God knew you were going to be here. God knew that you are going to put your good clothes on and make your way up to this church today. So God's got something to say for you, even from a screen. So lean in and let's take some notes because God's got something to say to Courageous Church today. Listen, uh, as we go into this word, I just want to also remind you guys that we are a baby church of just six months old. And as we start on this mission, as we get on this, this vision for this church, I want to remind you guys of what the greater vision is of the kingdom, not just Courageous Church, but what all of our desire and heart should be for coming to church. You see, Jesus himself gave something called the Great Commission before he departed after he was resurrected from the dead, after he walked around for a while, exposing himself to, 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 to his disciples and to the world around him, before he went back and ascended to the right hand of the, of the Father, he gave some specific commandments that the entire church body, all of us, the kingdom, should keep in mind. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today, because I want to make sure as we are at the halfway point in this year that we have the right focus for the rest of this year. Oh, this is some good stuff right here. We're going to talk about some things that we need to be focused on as a church as we go into the next six months of this year. Are you ready? Okay, I want you to open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28, and I'm going to go down into the 18th verse. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and I'm going to just read a couple of verses to you because I want to make sure that we all know what our focus should be as a church. Are you ready? Here it is. And it says this. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has, given, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. He says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all of Tampa, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Amen. This is Jesus' final commission. This is his final speech. This is his final talk with his disciples and the people that are watching him and he ascends to the right hand of the father this is so important and it is essential it is so 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 serious for us all to lean in and hear what god is saying in this particular passage what number one we are baptizing people in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit we've seen over 35 people be baptized in just the first six months of our church we are seeing people get saved in our church giving their lives to christ we are seeing god do great things we are touching our community we are doing everything that we should and as we journey further into this thing called Courageous Church, as this kingdom-minded church continues to track, I want to make sure that we are focused on the king's agenda. Hello, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. All right, here we go. You ready? I want you to take some notes because I never want you to come to church and not take notes. I want you to write some stuff down. I want you to leave with something. I don't want you just to come casually to church. We take the word of God serious in this church. The Bible is one of our core values. And when we teach this book, we are serious about getting something from it every single time we open it. Amen? All right, I hear y'all talking back to me. All right, here we go. All right, so here's, here's a few things that I want to think about. I want you to think about. If you're writing down a title, I want you to write down don't do it without me. Yeah. Don't do it without me. 
I believe there are some things that we ought to build this church on that we ought to not build this church without it. I believe that there are some things that Courageous Church is going to do. There are some things that are optional that we may do. There are some things that we may consider doing. But I think that there are absolutely some things that we absolutely cannot do Courageous Church without. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. First, when you're ready, write this down. Don't do it without the vision. Oh, this is good. This is good. See, you see those little barcodes all around the church. You see these things that we have around the church, these QR codes, these little QR codes. I want you to do yourself a favor because you haven't done it yet. It's okay. I'm not mad at you for it, but I want you to do it for the first time. And when you click on that QR code, it's going to bring up a, a link tree. And in that link tree, it's going to have something about our vision there, the vision, the mission of Courageous Church. I want you to click on that because I want you to really familiarize yourself with the vision, the mission, the values, and what we call our 12 stones. See, we have a vision for this church. We have a mission for this church. We have a commission for this church. And there's a particular way that God has spoken to us to build this church here in Tampa called Courageous Church. See, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 says, uh, Then the Lord answered and said to me, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he, that, that, that he may run with it who reads it. Yeah, that he may run with it who reads it. You see, the mission for Courageous Church and the vision of Courageous Church has been made very clear that we are here to save souls, that we are here to help lost people be found. We are here to instill courage in the hearts of people throughout this city. We are here on a particular assignment. And I think that there's something as so important as this. This ought to be something that if you call this church your home, you ought to familiarize yourself with the entirety of this vision because God has us on a mission and an assignment here. And I want every single one of us to speak the same language. I want us all to be able to say the same things. I want us all to carry the same burden in our hearts for what God has put inside of this church to be for this city. See, Habakkuk chapter 2 says, write the vision and make it plain. The vision is very clear the, 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 that we are here for a particular assignment. And I want to make sure that as we all serve in this church, whether you're a volunteer or whether you're somebody who just comes and, and attends the church, and that's okay too, or maybe you've just gotten here and it's your first time. I'm glad you're here, boo. Hello, how you doing? My name is Pastor Green. Great to meet you. I'll see you next week. I'll be there in person. But I want you to understand and know that this church has a particular calling and an assignment on it. God put this church in this city for a particular reason. Did you know that 80% of the people who attend, who, who go, to, who live in Tampa, don't attend church on a regular basis? And Courageous Church is here to combat that. Courageous Church is here to join arms with the rest of the kingdom-minded churches that are in this city so that we can see the gates of hell not prevail against this city. We are here to see God do great things. We are here to combat human trafficking. We are here to help with anti-human trafficking efforts and do whatever we can to see this city look more like the kingdom of God and less like you know where. We want to make sure that this thing absolutely populates heaven and plunders hell. That's why we're here. And I want to make sure you understand that this church has a vision. This church knows what it's here for. This church is clear on the assignment that God has given us. And I want every single one of us, as we serve this vision of this church, to understand the vision of this church. You can't do it without the vision. The second thing, if we're going to fulfill the Great Commission in this church, Courageous Church, I want to make sure that we don't do it without honor. Mm -hmm. Listen. We believe in honor in three different directions at Courageous Church. We believe in honor across, that's people that we're peers with. We believe in honoring up, that's people that we report to or folks that oversee us or lead us. And we believe in honoring down, those who we may oversee, those who are underneath us, those who serve alongside of us. I need you to understand and know that we are very high on honor in this church. And I need you to understand that we will not do anything in this church without honor. What does that mean specifically? That means that we don't speak to each other any kind of way. That means that we address each other by the way that we should address each other. That means we treat people the way we want to be treated. That means that we value everybody's input. That means that every single person, no matter where they come from, no matter where they live, no matter how far they drove, no matter where they flew from, no matter how long they've been in church, and no matter how long they haven't been in church, you are valued here at Courageous Church, and we honor every person that comes into those doors. I need you to understand that we are a high 
I honor church. That means that we are not going to look down on anybody who walks in. Everyone who walks in this church is going to get that love. That's right. You're going to get that love. We're going to love up on you and make sure that you feel valued. We want to make sure you feel seen. We want to make sure you feel heard. We want to make sure you know that your voice matters and that you're important to us. That is what honor looks like. Honor is so big. This is such a big deal. Even the Bible speaks about honor. This is really good. I want you to hear a particular scripture about honor. First Peter chapter two, verse 17 says, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the king. OK, I want I want you to understand that God cares about how we honor each other, too, that God is honored when we honor each other. This is so good. I need us to be more honorable. I need us to make sure that we're walking in honor. I need us to make sure that our communication and our talk is honorable. I need us to make sure that our body language is honorable. I need us to make sure that our thoughts are honorable as a church, because at the end of the day, we want our church to be a church that when God looks down upon, he sees honor in that church. And when he sees honor in that church, he can trust that church with more fruit. He can trust that church with more souls. He can trust that people will come through those doors of that church and they will feel valued, they will feel respected, they will feel seen, they will feel heard. This is so big because honor is something we can't do courageous church without. Number three. Oh, this is good. You ready? Can I push you a little bit? I just want to push you. I just want to push you just, just, just a little toe touch. Just want to push you just a little bit. You ready? Don't do it without generosity. Okay. One of our five core values of this church is generosity. We have modeled generosity in this church because we believe in generosity. Let me say this. We are not generous because we want you to necessarily do anything for us. We, we are generous because God commands us to be generous. We are generous because a generous soul is always blessed. We are generous because we know that there are needs in this city and needs around this church. We are generous because we know that everything we give into the kingdom creates meat in his house so that we would have barns that are full so that when we are ready to build, when we are ready to do, when we are ready to serve, when we are ready to help, we have the resources we we need so that we can do all that God has called us to do. Now, let me say this to you before you get off on just money. I need you to understand that we believe in generosity in three different ways at Courageous Church. We believe that you should be generous with your time. We believe that you should be generous with your treasure. We believe you should be generous with your talent. So that means that if you have a gift, if you operate in some type of, uh, uh, of, of great uh, uh, of gifting, something that you can contribute into the kingdom of God, you need to be offering that gift up to the kingdom. You need to be telling us at Courageous Church that you've got a certain gifting to do X, Y, or Z so that we can find a way to plug you in here at this church. Can I tell you your church needs your gift? Oh, this is some good stuff right here. See, you might have believed that your, your church doesn't need your gifting. You might have thought that just uh, corporate America might have needed your gift. You might have thought that just your job may needed your gift. But can I tell you something? Your gift in the hands of God is something good. Oh, this is good. I just want to turn around real quick because that's real good. I'm turning on vacation saying that. Your gift in the hands of God is always good. And I need you to understand that your gifting can make a difference in the kingdom. The way that you are built and the way that you think and the way that you see things, it can absolutely make a difference in the kingdom. And can I tell you something? All you have to do is go through growth track. And once you get through growth track, you can serve anywhere in this church. That is why God wants you to be generous with your talent and your, and your, and, and your, your uh, time and your treasure. We want you to be generous with your time. There are going to be some times you can show up and just serve. You can throw in an extra hand. You can be an extra person on the camera set. You can be an extra person around the sound. You can be someone extra around our setup and our teardown. See, because we believe in being generous with our time, our talent, and our treasure. And with your treasure, I just want to say that your, your, where your treasure is, so is your heart. And if you have heart for Courageous Church, I want to challenge you now. We're going to do a whole series on givings here very soon, but I want to challenge you to start thinking about honoring God with your treasure, depositing something into the soil as this baby church is starting to grow. I want you to be a part of what God is doing. I want you to make a contribution. I want you to make a contribution in every single way that generosity allows you to so that we can see the kingdom come, so that we can see the, the will of God be done, so that we can see God do what he needs to do right here on earth as he's declared it in heaven. And we can't do that without all of us being generous with our time, our talent, and our treasure. This is good. Let me give you a, a quick scripture as we, as we move past generosity, but I just want to say this to you. 
Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says this. It says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Oh, this is some good stuff. When you spend your resources and your generosity on helping someone else by being generous towards them, the Bible says that whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Do you understand there's refreshing on the way for you? It may not come in the same form that you gave it, but God knows how you need to be refreshed. This is some good stuff right here. God knows what you need, and when you are generous, God can trust you that you are being generous towards his kingdom, and he will not withhold anything from you. This is why I quote Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 all the time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things mm -hmm, will be added unto you. See? He trusts the generous soul. He trusts the heart of the generous. And I want us to work on being more generous, even more so. You guys are extremely generous. We have one of the most incredible churches. People come here and they are awed by the size of our volunteer team. Our dream team is absolutely incredible. The, 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 the amount of people who are in motion as we're tearing down and setting up, we are generous in every single way. I want to make sure that you guys understand that it is a value here at Courageous Church. And that is why we are so generous with our time, our talent, our treasure. Number four, I'm almost done. I got a couple of more. I told y'all I'm gonna get y'all out of here in an hour and I'm gonna do just that. Yes, yes, yes. So number four, don't do it without a why. Oh, this is some good stuff right here. Listen, you can't serve the kingdom. You can't be about God's business without a why. Why would you do this without a why? Can I tell you something? My why keeps me in the air so that I can fly. My why fuels me in the morning when I don't want to get up at 5 o'clock and connect the trailer to the truck. My why reminds me of why I'm here and, and, and what this is really about. See, because when this becomes mundane, and I'm talking about serving the kingdom, I'm talking about being kingdom-minded, I'm talking about coming to church on a regular basis, I'm talking about making sure our kids come up in the house of the Lord, I'm talking about when that stuff starts to wane and feel stale, and it starts to feel mundane, and it starts to feel like it's something that we're just doing to check the box, we're missing our why, and we're losing sight of the reason why which we do what we do. See, sometimes we have to remind ourselves of where we were before we started coming into the kingdom. We have to remind ourselves of who we were before Jesus set us free. We have to remind ourselves of the stories around this church about people who moved from Tennessee and drove overnight to come down to this church who were just a part of the e-church experience. And because God spoke to them, they came down and now they're faithful servants in this church. People who fly down from Washington, D.C. every two weeks to be a part of this church because they love what God is doing in this church and it's changing their families. People who make four hour drives all the way up from, from north in Florida to drive down one direction four hours and four hours back because they love this church and it is their why that keeps them moving. It is their why that keeps them bought in. It is their why that makes them show up every single week to this church. And can I ask you, do you have a righteous why of why you are at Courageous Church? What hooked you? What got you? What's, what, what's sunk into your heart? What is it that we do that absolutely touches you at your core? Whatever that was, I need you to find a way to keep that picture in your mind because when the devil wants to tempt you with not being faithful to the kingdom of God anymore, I want you to remind him of your why because your why will be the reason that you stay in the air and you continue to fly. This is some good stuff. God is up to something in this church, and I don't want to see the devil pick anybody off because you lose sight of your why. Number five, you ready? You ain't going to see this one coming. Don't do it without walking. Jesus walks. Jesus walks with me. You see, the it's so popular that, that, that even Kanye made a song about Jesus walking. Do you know that Jesus fulfilled every bit of the promise and every mission, every miracle, every sign, every wonder by walking? You never read in the scriptures where Jesus is ever in a hurry to go anywhere. Jesus walked everywhere. He walked to the pool of Bethesda to heal the lame man. Ooh. He walked, 
He walked to, to, to the centurion soldier whose, whose servant was healed just by his word. He, he walked as he walked. As he walked, people were healed. As he walked, lame people began to walk. As he walked, uh, 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 people in sycamore trees began to cry out. And Jesus began to heal them and go into their houses. As he walked the mission of God out, he did it all moving at a pace that was manageable, moving at a pace that didn't burn him out, moving at a pace where God's grace set on everything that he did. Can I ask you something? Are you serving Jesus? And are you serving Jesus and walking at the same time? This is some good stuff. You see, I think that burnout happens when you start running too fast and you don't take breaks like you're supposed to. You ready for this word? Here it is. Y'all heard me say it before. Sabbath, when do you have a day off? Right, here's a better question. What is your day off where you do nothing but rest? Because if God and his greatness and his majesty and his splendor had to rest after creating everything he created, he took a day to rest. Who are you that you don't rest? Maybe your life would be more fruitful if you walked and stopped running. Jesus even had an opportunity to be in a rush when Lazarus died, but he waited three days and got there, and Lazarus was dead in the tomb for days because Jesus walked. This is some good stuff. You need to walk more and stop running. You need to stop being in a rush and stop moving fast past everything that you're doing. And you need to start walking so you can smell the roses around you because life may actually be better than you think. Maybe you're just moving at a breakneck speed and moving at too fast of a pace to enjoy the life that God has called you to enjoy. Because I have learned that people who rush themselves when they serve Jesus don't serve Jesus long. When you run and you rush, you trip and you fall. When you walk and you move at a slower pace, you can carry more. You can carry more weight. You can do more. You have more energy. You have more focus. You have more joy because you actually get to take it in as you're doing it. I want to challenge those of you guys who have been doing this without walking. I want to challenge you to slow your pace down and begin to walk and not run. That means you need a day of rest. That means you need a day where you actually chill out. Now, I'm not saying stop coming to church. Now, don't let church be your off day, pastor. Uh, I got a revelation from the Lord. Well, I'm going to give you a rebuke from Jesus saying, don't take the day off on Sunday. Let Sunday be a day that you come and that you get refreshed and replenished from the Lord. Find a day that you can take off because I promise you it's there. You just got to fight for it and fight to keep it there so you can walk and stop running. Maybe you'll have more if you start walking and do less running. Last one is don't do it without the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit says, I don't want you to build a church without me. Holy Spirit says, I want you to do this with me. Holy Spirit says, actually, I want to lead you as you do it. The Holy Spirit says, I want to run this service. The Holy Spirit says, I want to be in your worship experiences. The Holy Spirit says, I want to build your youth ministry. The Holy Spirit says, I want to be in that team as they serve. The Holy Spirit says, I want to be in that church as they serve the lost. The Holy Spirit says, I want to be in every single part of this church. I need to make sure that I am the focus point. I am the lead person that is leading this effort called Courageous Church, called the Kingdom of God. See, we can't do kingdom without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be present. And for everybody who thinks that I am talking about jerking and jumping, for those of you guys who are thinking about just that alone, I am not speaking of that. I am talking about the power of God that the Holy Spirit brings to the work of God. You see, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. See, our church needs power. This is why we pray before we start services. Our church needs power. This is why we uh, believe the Holy Spirit. And this is why we lead people in receiving the Holy Spirit in this church. This is why we teach about the Holy Spirit in this church, because we don't want to be a powerless church. We are here to be a beacon of hope. 
We are here to be a place where the power of God can flow and move and change people's lives. Let me tell you something. It is not our bright lights. It is not our, our, our cool uh, instruments. It is, not, it is not our cool tech gear or our sound equipment that will change people's lives. I need you to understand that when people walk in this room, they need more than just the aesthetics. They need spirit. They need Holy Spirit. They need the power of God. And that is what's going to make Courageous Church the church church that it is because we are a spirit-led church that is led by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome, not just in this church, but you're welcome in my house. You're welcomed in my life. You see, the Holy Spirit is not just goosebumps. The Holy Spirit actually came to live inside of all of us and lead and guide us into all things that are true because he is there to make the difference of what we cannot do. He is there to make sure that everything that we do and that we touch is spirit-led. He is there to make sure that there is spiritual fruit in every season that we find ourselves in, the Holy Spirit's job is to teach the church, is to train the church, is to make sure that courageous church is in line and doing everything that he has told us to do. And we will listen and yield anytime he speaks because we need the power of the Holy Spirit in this church. Sheesh. I feel good right there. I feel good right there mm -hmm. because we won't do it without the Holy Spirit. We won't build the kingdom without walking. We won't do it without a why. We won't do it without generosity. We won't do it without honor, and we won't do it without a vision. Bow your heads, I wanna pray for you. I want you to stay safe tonight. Be careful, watch your kids. But I want you to catch this word before you get into your festivities for the holiday. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about not doing it without any of these things because truly we can't build the kingdom of God here in Tampa without remembering these. We need every single one of them to be active in our church, which means we need every single one of them to be active in you. Father, I thank you for every person, even those watching online today, Father God, that you are speaking to us, you have spoken to us, you have written the vision and you've made it plain, you've helped us to understand that we can't do it without you. Father, I even pray for someone right now that has made a decision in their hearts, even as we're in this service, Father, that they're tired of doing life without you. God, I pray even right now on the 4th of July, the day that we celebrate freedom and justice for all in our country, I pray that someone would receive, would receive freedom and liberty in their hearts as they say yes to you, as they give their hearts over to you today. I pray for that person who's making that choice today. I pray for that person who's deciding, Father, I've been doing this running and not walking. Father, I'm praying for that person that has decided, God, I'm, I, I've had some thoughts about the Holy Spirit, but today I'm changing my mind. God, I, I'm praying for that person today that says, Father, I'm going to do this with honor. I'm going to respect people. I'm going to speak to them right, God, God, because you listen and you hear every single thing, God. You, you hear every conversation that's had in the kingdom. You hear every conversation that's had in the world, Father, and we just are thankful today, God, that you You've given us the liberty and the freedom to be a part of your kingdom. I pray that your kingdom would come. I pray that your will would be done in Courageous Church. As you declared it in heaven, so shall it be right here in Tampa. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, we love you guys so much. We're so grateful that you guys decided to come to church today. And we are thankful that this is a great day that we celebrate our freedoms and our liberties. Listen, as you go and you leave this place, do it safely. Make sure that you're here next week on the 11th. I got a fresh word on the 11th just for you, and we got a great worship experience. We'll see you there right here at Courageous Church.